Hey, what's going on guys? This is Chris Mango. I just want to give you a walkthrough of the pause menu tabs uh, for Mango Mischief. You can pause the game uh, by either pressing the escape button on your keyboard or right clicking with the mouse. Um, of course, if you're using a controller, there's a button that'll pause the menu that way as well. Uh, this is a pretty new save file. As you can see here, uh, it's just Marion. We don't have the other three party members yet. We don't have access to Arak or Mero or Sprig just yet. Um, in fact, Marion hasn't even had any battles. She's still level one. Her experience bar is still completely empty. Um, she still needs 20 more experience to get to level two. Her default class is Rascal. She starts with 100 hit points, 30 magic points, and the TP bar, the technical points bar, um, these are essentially things that you'll gain during battle uh, for a variety of different reasons, which uh, I'll get to in a moment. Once you hit 100 te technical points, uh, she can use one of her best attacks. Um, it's similar to like a Final Fantasy Limit Break or Overdrive meter. Um, as this is a new account, uh, there aren't really any items or weapons or armor just yet, uh, but this is where they'll be logged. Um, items, these items here will typically be used in battle. Um, obviously, weapons and armor will be used for uh, equipping Marion and her three allies. Uh, the key items, uh, these will be kind of treasures that you gain throughout the game that will be stored that help further the plot. Uh, you won't be using these directly in battle, though. Skills, when, uh, when you double-click the Skills tab, there will be two important tabs here, Skills and TP mode. Skills will be the repository of all the skills that she learns uh, throughout uh, the classes that she levels up in. Uh, her one default skill is called Devastation. It's when she's got that full 100 uh, TP. When you've got that full meter, you can use Devastation, which essentially does four attacks in one turn. It's aimed at random enemies, so you, there's a little bit of a trade-off there. You don't get to choose which enemy you hit. Uh, however, um, you can hit the same enemy more than once. So if it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, you'll be hitting the same enemy four times in a row. Um, obviously, as you gain more skills, There'll be plenty of other skills that can use magic points, that can use technical points, and some even sacrifice uh, some HP as well. The TP mode uh, is something you can set with each character uh, individually. It's how you're going to be gaining TP in your different battles. Um, it's defaulted to combatant right now, which is a very straightforward. When Marion hits an enemy, she gains 10 TP. Uh, there's other options. Stoic would be when Marion gets hit, she'll gain 15 TP. Team player would be if you think it's more likely that uh, your teammates will be getting hit. Anytime a teammate gets hit, not including Marion, um, Marion will end up getting 5 TP per hit. Slayer would be when an enemy is actually killed, uh, she'll be gaining some TP. Tactician would be if you have a character that's likely to inflict a bunch of debuffs or status ailments, uh, that character will end up gaining TP if Tactician mode is activated. And Nurse would be primarily for Iraq, because Iraq is your central healer here. Using different healing spells will end up uh, increasing TP as well. Uh, you can only do one at a time, but you can change them between battles whenever you want, depending on the dungeon or the enemies that you'll end up facing. Um, it's usually pretty useful to tinker with these to figure out which ones are likely to make your TP meter fill the fastest. As far as equipping goes, um, when you have weapons and armor, this will be more relevant, but there's a bunch of different slots for different gear. Things like the amulet, talisman, and necklace uh, will be for very uh, specific, special uh, buffs. Uh, for example, if you want to make sure you never get poisoned again, or never get paralyzed, or confused, or charmed, or any of those sorts of status ailments, um, you can select the right accessory. Um, something like the elemental necklace would be if you know you're going to be versing um, a lot of enemies that are specifically uh, water type or fire type or light type or dark type. If there's a specific element that you want additional protection from, the elemental necklace, um, choosing the correct element would be really useful there. You'll have access to a lot of different types of gear um, to allow for as much custom uh, customization as possible. Here's the list of the classes that are available to each character. Right now, we're just starting with Rascal, but once she hits level 10, You'll come back in here and there'll be two more classes available, each of which you would then raise to level 10. So this will be an ever-growing list of classes or jobs, whatever you want to call them, um, that each character uh, can level up in from level 1 to level 10. Um, 
completing each class, and in fact, gaining levels from each class as a whole, will oftentimes unlock multiple skills. Status has additional stats. Um, this is a nice place to compare. Uh, if you press the page up or page down key, you'll be able to rotate through the different characters to very quickly see you know, who might need more magic defense or who might need more agility uh, as you think about what type of gear you might want to end up purchasing. Formation won't be relevant until you have more than one character, obviously. You can swap who is the uh, party leader, and by party leader I mean um, who the front walker or the front runner ends up being. This will also change um, the visual battles in terms of who's at the top of the battle screen, who's at the bottom, uh, but this won't affect turn order at all. Turn order is decided by the agility of each character, as well as the enemies. As far as the journal goes, this is where the different quests will be logged in. Uh, it seems here we've got one available quest, meaning there's one quest that hasn't been completed yet, and you can of course click on the quest to read about it. Um, whether it's available quests, completed quests, or all quests, uh, we've got three different uh, kind of subsets here, categories. We've got main quests, we've got side quests, and we've got tutorials. Um, as you can see here, uh, one of the completed quests, in fact the only one so far, is basically how to escape from battles. Um, I, I spoke to an NPC earlier, and they gave me this specific tutorial. And if for whatever reason you want to have all the quests uh, logged together, you can just go to the All Quests tab, which combines all the available and completed ones, which means this list will get pretty long. I think there's 64 quests in all, which by quests I'm referring to all the main quests, side quests, and tutorials combined. I think it's 64. Here's your overworld map, which will make a lot more sense when you're actually in the overworld as opposed to inside a room. Um, my beta testers haven't even seen this yet because this was a new edition thanks to some feedback I got. Um, this will be very useful. As you can see here, the entire overworld map um, has a bunch of different general regions. We start off around here. Uh, most of the beginning of the game can be done through walking. Eventually you'll need a boat, which is pretty much locked in this light blue rectangle here. Once you're done with all of the boat-related quests, it'll eventually, naturally, uh, progress into you needing a ship, which will open up the dark blue, larger rectangle here of the overworld map. And then finally, you'll end up getting an airship for super fast travel and to access a few other places that were otherwise uh, locked away. Music menu. I wanted to make sure I had a music menu that had the option of you just playing any music you want. Um, so the default music in this room is Marion's Lute Lullaby. This is the music that's essentially going on in the background of this room naturally, but I did uh, walk to a different place just to unlock another song, the forest refrain, when you're um, in the forest area where there are some enemies. And so you can sit in this menu if you want and sample all the different music that you end up unlocking throughout the regions. There's a lot of music, because uh, there's a lot of regions in the game. But when you do exit out, it'll go back to whatever the default music is of that specific room or area. As far as options go, uh, the all obviously lists everything. You don't have to necessarily go into just general, just audio, just visual, or just controls. The all has everything here. Um, always dash. Um, you can choose to keep that off or on. And this would be always running. Uh, if you do always dash, you're always running around if it's possible. Otherwise, you might be walking and then you'll have to hold down a button to dash. Uh, command remember, this is for battle. Um, it's defaulted to off right now, which means whenever you're battling and you're scrolling through the different skills that your character can use, um, when it's your turn a second time and a third time, you'll have to scroll back down to whatever the skill is. Um, but if you do command remember, uh, the uh, cursor will automatically be on the last command you used. So if you're versing a lot of fire enemies and you keep using water spells, uh, you won't have to go down the list all over again every single time to find the same water spell over and over again. Um, your cursor will already be on that spell if you want to keep spamming the same spell over and over again. Uh, message speed, that's just how fast and how slow uh, the, the dialogue and the text appear. We can change our master volumes. 
to whatever works for you. Battle animation speed, it's defaulted to normal. Obviously, if you're doing a speed run, there's an option for that. But I'd recommend at least playing the game on normal first, just because I spent a lot of time creating these animations, and that'd be great, thanks. Uh, and then there's keyboard config down here. Uh, this just shows some of the different uh, keyboard keys. Uh, for example, uh, there's a backlog B button. So if you exit out and you press the B button, uh, these are the last few texts or dialogues from speaking to different individuals or uh, whatever other information we have. Other than that, we've got save where you can save and load. Um, we've got a whole bunch of different slots here. This is a pretty much completed file. And, uh, exit game. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more clips about Mango Mischief, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. The Steam link for my game, as well as all Mango Mischief social media links, are posted in this video's description. I think you'll enjoy my satirical, retro-style, turn-based JRPG, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments section below. Thanks!